What is going on, 8th grade Bible? I hope you all are doing well. Oh my goodness, I almost forgot a picture. Uh, look, here we go. It's one of these... <laughs> one of those statues. I don't remember what the... Ah, there it is. Willow tree statue. This one is Beautiful Wishes. It's very cute. Hope you all are doing well. Week 3, online learning. We, as a class so far, have been talking about how do we, as Christians, handle money, wealth, poverty. How do we, as Christians, view the economic systems in our nation and in this world? And which ones should we be supportive of? Which ones are Scripture supportive of? How do we put on our Christian glasses that really should be tethered to our head, glued down, because you can't separate your, your love for Jesus Christ from the decisions that you make in this life that's kind of paradoxical, and view the world and view economy specifically. Today we're talking a little bit about welfare systems. Different welfare systems would be things like government housing, things like food stamps, things like uh, anything really contributed to by taxpayer dollars to help the poor or help those in need, okay? Uh, food stamps basically function, unemployment, that would be one. Um, food stamps basically function, you know, they go, they, you know, you tell them how much money you're making and they'll give you a certain amount of food stamps or basically almost gift certificates so that you can put food on the table for your family. And I want us to take a little different approach to this as we think about welfare systems. Again, systems funded by taxpayer dollars to help the poor. I want you to think about something here. Why do we as a nation have welfare systems in place. Think about that. Is it good to help the poor? Yes or no? Hopefully you answered yes. Is it good to help the needy? Yes or no? Hopefully you said yes. Is it good to help those that are hungry? Yes or no? Hopefully you said yes. It's always good to help people in need. What does scripture say about this? Here's the reality. I think in God's economical system, I think he placed the church in charge. I think you read through a lot of Paul's epistles and you see this like repeated over and over and over again. Even in, even in the Gospels, you hear Jesus say, um, if you did these to the least of these, you did this to me. If you gave the least of these water, so you gave me water. You see Jesus encourage us to help the poor and the needy. But you also see in Paul's epistles several times, commission the church of Jesus Christ to help the poor and the needy and the widows. He, he, he kind of points those two groups out. The widows who, you know, especially in that culture, um, if they did not have a spouse, had a really hard time um, providing for themselves. This is the culture they lived in. But also for the poor and the needy as well. And you see Paul commission the church of Jesus Christ to do this, to take care of the people. So let me, now that you know that, and hopefully maybe you already knew that already, but let me ask you the question again. Why is it important to have welfare systems and whose job is it really? Think about that for a second. I just told you that Paul commissions the church of Jesus Christ to take care of the widow and the needy. Whose job is it really to take care of the poor, the needy, and the widows, and the elderly? Whose job is that? Is it the government's? Is it us as individuals? Or is it us as a church of Jesus Christ? You see, I think that part of the reason welfare systems exist, part of the reason that... <laughs> there's Winnie. See? Say hi, baby. Look. Say hi. Look, you're on camera. I think part of the reason that welfare systems exist is actually because of a failure of the church. I think if we have Christ as Christians have problem with welfare system, we really have nowhere to look except to us. Why did the government step up? And why did the government kind of supersede the church? And why did the government start using our taxpayer dollars to take care of the needy and the widow and the poor? I would say it's because the church failed to do so. We see the church of Jesus Christ fail continually to take care of those in need around us, to take care of our elderly, to take care of those who maybe be down on their luck for a little bit. 
We, we hoard our money and we stash it away for our own selfishness and our own benefit instead of looking around at the people who need it the most, the people who are within our church you know, bodies who we interact with on a daily basis. And a lot of times they'll, you know, they say they need something and we'll say, I'll pray for that, I'll pray for you. And you know, we got money in the bank account. You know, we got savings and we could help them out and get them back on their feet, but we don't do that. Right, And then a lot of times we as Christians get frustrated and upset that the government takes our taxpayer dollars and distributes it to the poor to help them out a little bit. I think if we really truly have a problem with the government taking our taxpayer, do- tax- taxpayer dollars to redistribute it to the poor, provide food stamps, government housing, you know, things like this to take care of them, I think we should look a little more inwardly than outwardly. We should stop maybe pointing fingers and saying, you shouldn't do that government and start saying, how can we get the government to not do that? Because again, I think if you read through Paul's epistles, you'll see time and time again, he commissioned the church and say, take care of the poor, take care of the needy, take care of the widows, take care of the elderly, take care of the people that need you around you. And I think the reason America's governmental system feels the need to take care of the poor is because nobody else is. And that should, Christians, that should break our hearts. That should tear us up. I pray that the Lord opens our eyes. You know, there's that good song by Brandon Heath, Give Me Your Eyes. I encourage you to listen to it. Give me your eyes for the brokenhearted. Give me your eyes to see the needy people around me. And it may not always be money. It may not always be food or clothes. Maybe they just need someone to talk to. But I think we're very selfish um, in the sense that a lot of times our eyes are closed and we're always looking inward what I need and what I want. And I just pray that the Lord, and this is a prayer for me too, it just opens our eyes to the people around us that need, whether it's money, whether it's food, whether it's clothes, whether it's just a conversation or a friend, I pray that he opens our eyes to see that. Before we start complaining about the systems around us, let's be the change that the systems need, right? Let's make the system inadequate because the church stepped up so much so to take care of the poor the widow the elderly that the government looks and it's like oh all these people are taken care of and accounted for already on what basis by the basis of jesus christ by the basis of the word of god that's why government you don't need to take care of them because we are amen all right hope you guys have a good day i'll be explaining a big assignment for you guys tomorrow it should be fun you should enjoy it i'll see you guys later